spawn under Minecraft myths are the scariest to ever exist. Endermen are just villagers that fell into the void. This sounds crazy, right? And one of the scariest things about them is the fact that they only attack you after you stare into their eyes. And while that doesn't even seem scary at first, the consequences can be quite terrifying. It's almost like Endermen don't even want to attack players. But when you see them face to face, they change almost instantly. Why is this? Here's my theory. We know Endermen have great eyesight, so it's not like they don't know when a player is around. It's like they were originally hardwired to be friendly, but something changed. Something very, very bad. What if Endermen were originally just kind creatures who didn't want to harm anybody? I get tingles thinking about this. What if they weren't Endermen from the beginning at all? Oof. Some people have been speculating that Endermen have a past that isn't just scary, it's quite sad. They say that the species was created when a young group of seven villagers were mining in a cave, and then they hit bedrock. This bedrock wasn't like the usual one they had seen in the past. In fact, it was soft. And when they stepped on it, the poor villagers fell into the void, then the entire floor collapsed and all the villagers fell with their other fellow villagers. That same night, villagers started spotting tall, skinny creatures with piercing purple eyes, and the scariest part? There were exactly seven of them. These creatures then continuously started growing, populating, and became known as the Endermen. Villagers are trying to break out of Minecraft and come to the world that you and I live in right now. What are they doing in that dank, secluded mansion of theirs? With its redstone jails, elaborate altars, and hidden rooms housing strange obsidian structures? It really seems like they are plotting something. And if you watch anime like My Hero Academia or even Attack on Titan, we always know there's something hidden in the basement. And if you don't believe me, take it from the former creative manager for Minecraft, who was the person who originally made my previous statement. But notice something interesting. He is the former creative manager who left the company after just sending this message out to the public. Did he leave out of his free will? Or was this Mojang's punishment because he started to reveal some of the underlying secrets about the Illagers. I know this sounds like a stretch, but it could be true. What could they have been hiding? We know they were banished for using black magic, but what if there is more to it? What if this magic wasn't just dangerous to villagers, but it was dangerous to you and even I in the human world? The myth states that illagers are trying to create a device with their magic to come to our human world. Goosebumps! Oh, goosebumps alert! The villagers haven't been trying to protect themselves. They've been trying to protect you and I this entire time. They're just misunderstood. Oh, dude, it just all makes sense. And this myth is about the origin of the Warden. The Warden is a terrifying mob by itself, and if you agree with me, please like this video. So if you are wondering if it has a scary backstory, you'd be absolutely correct. These sources say that the Warden isn't a modern creature, but something prehistoric. And no, it wasn't born, it was created by something. They say that thousands of years ago, the ancient builders who ruled in Minecraft and built everything had one big problem. They haven't liked the video yet. I'm just kidding. Anyways, the Wither, a giant three-headed flying skeleton appeared from nowhere and terrorized the nations, creating havoc and wiping out the ancient builders like literal flies. But they had just one idea to save their race. They built and built for 100 years to create the Warden. Don't you see? It all makes sense. Have you ever wondered why the Warden can't see? It's because it doesn't have organic flesh or eyes. It's like a machine. In fact, a killing machine. And the Warden destroyed the Wither with Within minutes, and the builders were finally set free, or so they thought. They made the warden to destroy, and well, it destroyed. It wiped out the entire race of ancient builders, and their greatest creation became their greatest destruction. And just a thousand years later, the wardens are still deep in the cities of the old ancient builders, just waiting for a poor and unfortunate player to come by. This explains the deep dark, skulk veins, and so much more. Just like how pigs are actually the secret overlords of Minecraft. This one might sound silly, but you have to hear me out. Pigs are the leaders behind one of Minecraft's darkest conspiracies. What do pigs like to eat? Carrots. What are the rarest drops from zombies? Carrots. I have a question for you. Why do you think that zombies go around attacking villages? You might think it's because they want to kill villagers, but that's not quite the only truth. It's for carrots. And why would zombies need carrots, you ask? To feed their masters, the freaking pigs in Minecraft. But it doesn't stop there. In fact, <coughs> oh my gosh, I, I got so excited, I choked. In fact, it only goes so much deeper. What do villagers grow for food beside wheat? That's right. Carrots. And no, this is not a coincidence, you see. There is something funny you've never noticed about villages. In the animal pens, one animal is always missing. Can you guess which animal it is? That's right. The pigs. 
That's because the villagers don't even dare to imprison them. Only the bravest manage before dying mysterious deaths. And this plot still continues to thicken. What do you find in pillager outposts? That's right, carrots again. Do pillagers unknowingly serve the same lord as their nemesis? Here's the last knot to tie all of these together. How were creepers made in the beginning? That's right, from the pig. But why, Preston? What if pigs were angry at players for killing their brethren for food, and so they created the most devastating enemy that haunts players to this day for ultimate revenge? And what if they created something larger to completely take over Minecraft itself? Whatever you do, just know they will be hunting you. And that's why I'm filming this video from the safety of my home instead of my office, because the pigs are always watching. This sea monster was removed from Minecraft because it deleted a player in real life. When you think of scary creatures in Minecraft, you probably don't even think about something from the sea. I mean, the creepiest thing in the ocean is the Elder Guardian. Let's be honest, that isn't frightening in the least. It's just annoying. Not to mention that he's not even a real boss. But have you ever questioned that there's a reason for this? That's right. We're getting spicy. We're going deep, baby. What if there was another mob intended to be the boss? You won't see anything I'm about to tell you anywhere on the internet, and that is because Mojang doesn't want you to see it. Players who won't even let me tell you their name have helped me undercover some of the secrets about this. Legally, I have to say this is speculation, but I believe that every word of this is actually true. The players state that on the 14th of July in 2018, a big new update dropped to Minecraft, and it had a brand new boss. This boss was located in the ocean. It was not the Elder Guardian, however, and players couldn't locate it anywhere. 47 hours later, a player did manage to find it, but he didn't realize just how extremely unlucky he was to have done so. Immediately, the player's name was no longer found in Mojang's game files, and just a few moments later, the update was removed and then re added to the game. The creepiest part is that no one has seen the player since, and this was never resolved. So what happened to them? The player's name was Safrin the Bold, and this was the last screenshot that have ever been seen of him in game. And if you like this one, they're only going to get better, so don't go anywhere. Mobs that have been scrapped by Minecraft aren't deleted from the game. They're just hidden inside of the void. One of Minecraft's most exciting events is the mob vote, except for when the glow squid was chosen. Thanks, Dream. Personal vendettas aside, players from all around the world choose between three to four new mobs to be added to the game. And we have some of Minecraft's most iconic mobs thanks to the community vote, such as the llama and even the panda. But have you ever wondered what happened to the mobs that weren't selected? Were they just tossed to the side, never to be thought of again? No, that can't be right, because footage of them actually exist on YouTube. Does this mean that the mobs that didn't get the votes are still in the game and they haven't been deleted? If so, where did they go and what are they doing right now? Are they being held captive in the woodland mansions beneath or in the outposts by the illagers? Are they being held within bastions or fortresses by even the hoglins? But we haven't seen anything near those locations before though, so they probably aren't there. That's when it hit me and then I remembered. What is the one location in all of Minecraft that a player is not allowed to go no matter what? A place that you die even if you go into creative mode. A place that you can't even survive while cheating in spectator mode. The void. That's right, guys. The freaking void. All of the forgotten mobs are at the bottom of the void, just waiting to be freed from their prison. But eventually, a player will be strong enough and figure out how to survive the void and free every single community mob that is stuck and trapped down there. And I'm not quitting Minecraft until they're free. Zombies are just undead Steves. Zombies are the most annoying vanilla mob in Minecraft. They couldn't possibly have a dark history, right? I wish that was true. See, if you look very close at the zombies' clothes, you'll notice two very interesting details. One, every single one of them is wearing the same thing. Two, they look eerily similar to Steve's clothes. And no, they don't just look similar. They are identical, not paternal. And does that mean that every zombie is a Steve that has died? That is pretty scary. And it even seems plausible, but I think that there's even more to this myth. There have been too many reports of players seeing zombies coming straight out of woodland mansions. And if you don't believe me, why don't you just hear from some of our live witnesses? Because I've seen it yeah, every day. This dark truth made me think. What if the zombie who went into the woodland mansion wasn't a zombie when they walked in? What if it was Steve? 
What if the Illagers captured him to run experiments, but their experiments failed? Could they have been doing tests on Steve and then accidentally created the zombie? And even worse, was the zombie cloned? And we know that cloning is possible because of the Star Wars movie Attack of the Clones. That would explain why millions of them roam the world and why they all resemble Steve. This is almost similar to Attack on Titan, man. The only thing that gets darker than this is the fact that Alays are tortured souls. Most people think Alays are great, one of Minecraft's newest additions. These cute ghost-like creatures bring you items and they are very helpful in general. Unfortunately, it turns out that one of the most wholesome little mobs in the game is also one of the most tragic backstories. Some players have experienced Alays dying in unusual ways. They say that Alays that died in their game had their own custom death message. The creepy part? The Alays had names. And not generic names like Alay 1, 2, and 3, but names like John, Sarah, Smith, Preston. Real human names. Death messages like John has died from fall damage got me thinking. Why would these cute little mobs have human names? Were they named after the developers as an Easter egg? Or is there something darker at play here? What are Alays? That's right. Ghosts. But the question of the hour, from what mob? They can't be from any villager or hostile mob because we don't see the ghosts that appear from them. But then I did more research, and what I found sent shivers down my spine. In 2020, a list of unfortunate players that had passed away while playing the game was released. Among these names, John and Sarah, even Preston. And if you check the time, it's the exact day that Alays were released. And this furthers the truth that Alays are just tortured souls that have been released into Minecraft for another chance at life like reincarnation. The true origin story of Entity 303. Entity 303, just hearing that name gives me shivers. This scary creature is one of Minecraft's most notorious killers and one of its scariest myths. There are thousands of videos about this creature just on YouTube alone. But unlike the others, what if I told you that Entity 303 wasn't just a story, but that he's real? Or should I say, they? You might have heard the creepy stories about the Entity invading players' servers and causing terrifying things to happen. But have you ever wondered where the Entity comes from? It's not even safe for me to tell you this information online, but I'm gonna do it anyways. In 2014, Notch, the creator of Minecraft, fired an employee. Why was this? Because the employee won in Minecraft to have an extremely scary mode added to the game. In this mode, all damage in the game would directly hurt the player in real life. In fact, somebody literally just announced they've managed to make a VR headset that if you die in the game, you die in real life. He claimed there wouldn't be too much harm done and that it would increase the immersion for the players. But Notch, of course, saw through what he was trying to do by putting this dangerous mechanic in the game and unfortunately had to let him go. And from that day on, the former employee started to take revenge on Mojang and Minecraft players alike. He is said to have created a whole team of hackers going by the usernames 303mojang.com303 and entity.303. If anyone had any files in their computer named anything with 303, then his hackers were already on your computer and it was already over. 303 would hack into players' worlds, corrupt them, and they would never see them again, in game and in real life. And the scariest part about this is that they haven't been caught. So check your computer, tablet, iPhone, console, check the comments of this video, and if you see anything with the numbers 303, it might be too late. <laughs> The true story of the Ender Dragon. It is widely thought that the Ender Dragon is controlling the Endermen, ruling them and keeping them there in the end. And once you defeat the Ender Dragon, you free the end. But that's not the full story. First of all, did you know that the Ender Dragon has an actual name? Confirmed by the creator of Minecraft, it's Gene. And no, not Gene from Attack on Titan. If this is just a final boss in a video game, why would it need to be given an actual name? For that, I had to dig so deep, man. The end has actually left us with clues that the end was populated with many different Ender Dragons. Just look at the front of the end ships, and you will find the old heads of Ender Dragons. Was there once a massive population that hunted dragons at one time, similar to the prehistoric dinosaurs in our world? But why was this ancient civilization even hunting dragons in the first place? Was this all just a game for them to conquer the one final thing left in the game of Minecraft? Was it all to capture the ability of flight found in the elytra wings? While this does make some sense, it does not explain why they would leave one final inner dragon in the end. Could the final dragon not even be a dragon at all? 
Could one of the ancient civilization people have been Jean all along? Maybe Jean did not like that her people were killing the dragons and tried to stop them. However, her attempt was unsuccessful and the ancient civilization captured her and performed a terrible transformation ritual on her, turning her into the beast that is known as the Ender Dragon that she once so desperately tried to protect. And this would even explain the Ender Crystals as well. These Ender Crystals were placed to keep her alive forever. To live in an eternity trapped as an ender dragon in the end. And so my theory is that when you defeat the ender dragon in the end, you're not saving the endermen. You're actually freeing Jean from the curse that she has been under for so long. The truth about phantoms. What actually are they? Are they even real? As you know, phantoms only appear after you haven't slept for three days. And don't worry, I tested this in real life. They don't exist. Thank God, they're only in Minecraft. And they increase in number the longer you don't sleep. But these are the only mobs in Minecraft that do this. Could this all be a figment of your imagination? In fact, a hallucination? So it got me thinking, are they even actually attacking you? In real life, when you lose sleep, it affects your mind and your body. It's terrible for you. You don't think clearly, eye-hand coordination decreases, your memory is wrong, and that's just after one night of not sleeping. The longer you don't sleep, the worse the symptoms get. And after three days without sleeping is when the real crazy stuff begins. Now think back to phantoms. They only appear after you stop sleeping for three days. Do you think this is a coincidence? I don't. But how does that explain you losing health in Minecraft? It's been scientifically proven that after three days with no sleep that your body actually begins to harm itself. And this is why you have to get rest. And if you continue not sleeping, the worst of all can happen. You guessed it. Which is exactly what happens in Minecraft if we continue to disregard sleep. More phantoms, more pain, more hallucinations, and if we're not lucky, death. And if you're not sold on this yet, you can actually look up the definition of phantom. And you will find that the meaning of this word when you Google it is a figment of your imagination. Does Minecraft listen to you? You might think that Herobrine and the other monsters can hear you, but have you ever wondered if Minecraft itself is listening to you? Minecraft, it'd be really nice if I could find some diamonds right now. As you can see, Minecraft definitely does not... That was strange. What? A little bit creepy that we managed to find it as we mentioned the myth. And now that we have some diamonds, it would be sure nice if we could find a... A village. What the heck? We're gonna put this myth to rest once and for all. Minecraft, it'd be fantastic if you rained emeralds on this village. No. That's what I thought. Unless it only answers things that are reasonable. What if we wish for this villager to give us a trade for a diamond axe? Come on. Okay, maybe a diamond axe is unreasonable, but I am low on food. What? No freaking way. Is Minecraft listening to me or am I being watched? I'm watching you. Is there going to be a war between the Overworld and Nether in the next Minecraft update? You're going to need some backstory on this one, so buckle up. Get some popcorn, it's story time. Long ago, pigmen in Minecraft actually ruled the Overworld, but they destroyed villages, every single peaceful mob. They literally wreaked havoc on the Overworld. Villagers were sick and tired of the pigmen taking their baby villagers captive. So what did they do? They started building millions of iron golems. The golems were stronger than the pigmen, obviously, and so what they ended up doing is beating them back into the nether, locking them away after a thousand year war. And that realm that they were banished to is now known as the nether. Insane, right? Now you see why the overworld in Minecraft is in such danger. Pigmen in the nether are building bastions. They're storing up loot, weapons, you name it. Zombie pigmen have even mutated into stronger pigmen known as piglins. They have been acquiring so much gold in their trade, so that way they can buy enough weapons to take back over the overworld. And in the next update of Minecraft, not only are they going to take revenge on the Iron Golems, but I think they're going to try to take over the entire overworld once again. Are villagers just pretending to be dumb? And they're actually brilliant. I'm talking Einstein, Bill Nye level IQ here. Okay, listen. Villagers have to be hiding something. They open doors and walk around corners for literally no reason. Could they have a secretly much higher intellect than we had originally thought? Their heads are so freaking big, I'm telling you, they're hiding their massive brains in there. Why do zombies like going for villagers? Because zombies love eating brains. You starting to see what I'm saying here? And I mean, are we to expect that they put an entire village society together when they seemingly can't even exit a boat by themselves? Unless they are pretending. Maybe they have a deep, dark plan and it's absolutely evil. Is Minecraft the post-apocalyptic survival tutorial or is it a video game? At first, Minecraft seemed like a fun kids game. Now everybody plays Minecraft, okay? Even people who said they would never play the game, including celebrities and even politicians. Here are the facts about Minecraft. You spawn alone in a massive world where you have to learn how to fend for yourself. 
You have to make friends with villagers and certain mobs, negotiate with your enemies, piglins, and even make tools to survive. Is Minecraft subtly teaching its players real life survival skills? For example, did you know what Obsidian was before you played the game of Minecraft? If so, like the video. What if Notch made this entire game just so its players could survive the apocalypse? And the reason he sold it to Microsoft for billions of dollars is because people have already learned everything they need to know on how to survive an apocalypse. And almost everybody who started playing the game 11 years ago is grown up now. And now that they're all grown up, does that mean they're ready for what's to come in the future? And the real question is, have you played enough Minecraft to even know if you're ready for the apocalypse? Does Netherrack have an evil origin? Have you ever wondered what is Netherrack? Or more importantly, what it could be made from? The block seems to be made from a red fleshy-like substance that makes a weird fleshy noise when you break it. Listen very closely and break a ton of them with Efficiency 5. It makes you feel slightly uncomfortable. And because I felt so uncomfortable, I decided to research this block. I dug so deeply, I looked at the oldest code from the oldest versions of Minecraft, and in fact, Netherrack was actually the Bloodstone. But why would it be called Bloodstone? And then I remembered. Do you recall the Thousand Year War between the Iron Golems and Zombie Pigmen I just mentioned earlier? Well, most of that war actually happened in the Nether, not in the Overworld. What if the Nether was originally a gorgeous and vibrant place full of beauty, only to be demented by the battleground of blood from the Zombie Pigmen and Iron Golems who fought and died in the Nether? Netherrack is just cobblestone that has soaked up the blood of millions of Zombie Pigmen and Iron Golems. And what if they're still alive and crying out from the Netherrack blocks and that's the sound it makes every time you mine it? If I talk about this anymore, I'm gonna be uncomfortable. Wandering traders are just banished villagers. This myth states specifically that wandering traders are actually just villagers banished to roam the overworld at night. If you think this is a bit of a stretch, hear me out for a moment, all right? Every night when the sun goes down and the moon comes out, the wandering trader uses an invisibility potion on himself. Why would he do this? Does he not want to be seen? He needs to make trades, right? And another question, why have we never seen a wandering trader at a village? Could it be that they were banished far back in the ancient past of Minecraft? What could they have done that was so vile, so evil, that they still haven't been re-invited to the village culture? What if they unjustly were kicked out? framed even, or have they secretly been working with pillagers and that's why they keep going invisible? I'm telling you, this myth goes deep. deep. What if they're leaking information as to where the villagers are? How else would the pillager outposts know exactly where to raid them? Is the Minecraft dimensions theory actually true? Everything you do in Minecraft actually matters. From breaking a blade of grass to killing an innocent mob, it all matters. All those times you dumped innocent villagers into lava or blew up your friends with TNT had an actual consequence. Just like Santa Claus, Minecraft is collecting every good thing and bad thing you've done in the game and ultimately in the future will punish you accordingly. If you were a good kind of player, like you always defended villagers from raids or never killed mobs unless you needed some food, you go to the end. Or heaven in this theory's case. Heaven in Minecraft has infinite diamonds. Every villager listens to your command, trades you whatever items you want for as little emeralds as you want to pay. You can even forge nations and build any item you dream of. But if you continue to perform evil acts in Minecraft and you had no regret at all for all the peaceful mobs that you killed, you get sent to the nether, which in this case is Minecraft's version of hell. In Minecraft's hell, players are always at half a heart. You're always hungry, but there is never food nearby no matter how long you search for it. And even if you do find some food, it replenishes no hunger. The only thing that's nearby is netherrack and lava in every single direction. And the worst thing about it, it's a never ending loop. So no matter how far you journey, you're always going to end back in the same place you just were. Next time you think about bullying that villager or think about your actions because they have severe consequences. But the most popular theory is actually this. Herobrine is the judge of Minecraft. Similar to a Grim Reaper or Shinigami, if you watch anime. After a player has reached a level where their acts become so heinous and evil, he shows up for that player and they are never seen again in game. But some do say in real life. Think about it, have you ever had a friend who played Minecraft that no longer has contacted you after their evil deeds? And the player gets banned from the server, but in reality, Herobrine actually comes to take them away? Sounds legit. And the more you think about it, the more you start to believe in the dimension theory. How were the Endermen created? They're odd creatures, aren't they? Out of all the Minecraft mobs, none of them stand out quite as mysterious as these creepy creatures. And the deeper you dig, the more mysterious history you find out. It is said that the Endermen were the first civilized people of the Minecraft world. They were an ancient race of builders, and the myth states that they built everything in the whole entire game. And that's the reason they're the only mob in Minecraft that can still pick up blocks. But years after this, the Wither spawned. 
The Intermittent were strong, but they could do nothing to stop his rampage. They were eventually forced to open a portal to a new realm, and this made them move into what we now call the end. And because they only ate chorus fruits in the end, that's how they gained their ability to teleport. But with the blessing of teleportation came a curse. And you might even wonder why the Endermen try to kill you when you look at them. They try to kill you because they just escaped. If the Endermen were the first mobs ever, then they must have been trapped in the end for millions of Minecraft years. They lost their will and importantly their minds from consuming nothing but the chorus fruits. And now that players have been opening the portals to the end since Minecraft release, they slowly were let back into the overworld. This may be speculation, but I think they're jealous of every player in Minecraft because of the freedom we have in the game. And that's why they don't want to kill us. They actually want to eat us, just like Titans in Attack on Titan. So did they lose their minds because they were in the end for millions of years, or because the chorus fruit rotted their brains? That's for you to decide. The Ender Dragon enslaved the Endermen. This myth states that when the Endermen were driven to the end, the Ender Dragon enslaved all of them to do its bidding. It's a little crazy at first, but listen to what I found. We can place Ender Crystals. Surely they didn't just spawn there. Someone had to place them, and that means we know Endermen were taken captive by the Dragon. And because the Ender Dragon can't place blocks, but the Endermen can, you see where I'm going with this? The Endermen were forced to place the end crystals on top of the obsidian pillars, which then regenerates the Ender Dragon, essentially allowing it to live forever. This makes sense, because when you fight the Ender Dragon, he doesn't do anything to the Endermen below him. It would also explain why the Endermen became so evil and dangerous to us Minecraft players. Illagers were just villagers who were banished for their use of black magic. Because of our previous myth, we know that wandering traders are just banished villagers. So why are the illagers any different? They were banished for much darker reasons. Illagers actually used to be normal Minecraft villagers, but long ago, one day, a normal villager discovered something. He was playing around with his potions and found something incredible. When he used his secret ingredient, in his potions, all of his skin turned gray and he gained super villager strength. He then called this potion the Illager Potion. But soon after he celebrated, he was shut down by the rest of the villagers because they found out his secret ingredient. Iron Golem Brain. The Illager just wanted to improve the lives of the villagers, but after they found out what was inside of the potion, they had no choice. He created hundreds of Illager potions and set off a giant potion bomb in the whole town that would transform and brainwash every single one of them. After this, they named themselves the Illagers and started to raid villagers, taking more victims and growing their army by destroying iron golems and collecting more brains. And they have so much hatred for villagers that they have never stopped. Wither skeletons are born from the souls of fallen mobs. What is soul sand? Have you ever wondered why this block hisses at you and even screams when you try to break it? And if you zoom in closely, why does it look like there are faces inside of the block? Well, this myth states that during the 1000 year war, skeletons that were in the nether beforehand were burnt so bad that they ended up turning into soul sand. The scariest part is that soul sand is still alive. And when you're not looking at soul sand, it's said that a wither skeleton is born and the sand falls apart. And the only reason that the wither skeleton is dark is because it was burnt from long ago. Did gas come from squids? This one's a little bit out there, but as always, that's up for you to decide. If you try to figure out what gas are, you will have a hard time coming up with a good answer. A giant floating jellyfish? No, they must come from something else. Could they have come from a genetically mutated squid? If so, who created them? The ancient builders? The Endermen? And what is their purpose? Are they just guards to the nether fortress? Squids can breathe underwater, but I bet you didn't know that gas can actually breathe under lava. And because I don't believe in coincidences, the squid must be the original gas. What really is the void? Yeah, 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 the area below the bedrock, right? But have you ever wondered what it really is? And why does it kill you? Are we being suffocated because there's no oxygen like the dark realms of space? Or is the player actually freezing because the temperatures are sub-zero? And if we could survive and see in the void, what's actually there? Because even in spectator mode, you're still taking damage when you're in the void. So unfortunately, there's no way to see what's deeper. And because of that, we'll never be able to see what's in the void, right? Well, no, because you can actually venture eight long hours deep into the void using a full inventory of stacked notch apples. But even after eight long hours, players still haven't found the bottom of the void. So does this mean that players haven't ventured far enough or does the void actually not have a bottom? So if it does have a bottom, what's down there? Is it an expanse of nothing or does it just never end? Illagers are up to no good whenever players are not paying attention to them. Yeah, and we got an illager in this room right here. We just got to block him in. <laughs> Wait a sec, what is this? I do not remember this being in Woodland Mansions. Is this where the freaking, this is where the Illuminati of pillagers meet. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so this spyglass right here, this is how we're gonna capture our evidence, but also it can decode encrypted messages. Whoa, 
This is like a map to plan overworld domination. What is going on in here? Now that I've seen that, I've got some questions for this pillager. That was almost as weird as this portal. What is that? No, 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 wait a second. I didn't capture the evidence. No, no. How am I gonna prove this? Some people say there's a secret floor in the void. Commence digging, let's go. I just gotta take a screenshot if something's there and then boom, I win. That's it, that's it. That's all I need to do. And then after tough is bedrock, yes. Whoa, oh, wait, no, okay, I'm in the void. I didn't see anything. Wait, there's different places of the void. There's in the overworld void. There's the end void. There's the, the end islands void. Okay, I need, to, I need to expand my horizons. All right, this place is all void everywhere around. There's so much in the void that I'm gonna jump around the whole island in the end and see what I can find. Geronimo! Okay, okay, everyone look. Ah, uh, no, nothing. Come on, zoom in, nothing. Yeah, nothing, don't see, wait, what is, what was that? What was that? Wait, 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 screenshot it, screenshot it, screenshot it. Did I get it? What was that? Okay, guys, here's the screenshot. Um, I know I saw something, but this is the only evidence I have. I don't know if I get, I don't get the point. This evidence not strong enough, but I know what I saw. It's rumored that Soul Sand is secretly alive. So we're here to, to, to see if that's true. Maybe it'll be alive in the water. Let me throw it in water. Let me see if anything happens in the water. Okay, nothing. Sucks right. to be me right now. Maybe if I throw it in the nether, and I do this in the nether, it'll work. I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna throw it back into whatever, the uh, original world. I, I forgot what it's called. Oh, overworld, I don't know. I, I haven't been back so long, guys. Let's see if this works. What is that? What is that noise? Okay, I'm gonna place it right here. My goal is to see if I can get a mob to grab it. Okay, <gasps> okay, it's there. Let's see if it, let's see if it works. <gasps> it picked it up. Wait, I gotta get the screenshot. I gotta get the screenshot. Oh my god, it's here, Brian. No way. No, no, no way. I gotta get a screenshot here, Brian. Okay, I got a screenshot. Thank God. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. You've all heard the scary myth about giant Alex, but what if I told you that giant Steve makes her look like nothing in comparison? Preston thinks he's about to trap giant Steve and I'm invisible right now. Yeah, I'm gonna freaking prank him. I am now loading the seed of Steve. It's a dash dash dot space dot dot. It's basically Morse code. Hard difficulty, create new world. Now we wait 10 years. I love this wooden PC, bro. Oh, hit different. We have a village spawn with a ruined portal in the center of it. And this is perfect because it's about to be nighttime, which is said when he is supposed to be summoned. However, the rumors also say that giant Steve is technically invisible. So we're gonna have to be on the lookout for some big, big particles. There is a trick to find invisible things in Minecraft without even cheating. You can turn hitboxes on and look at this. I think this works. Yeah, and this definitely works if you're invisible. All we need is a giant hitbox on the spyglass and that will count as conclusive evidence. Okay, well like, so Giant Steve is basically a Titan from Attack on Titan, one of my favorite shows, by the way. You probably have not noticed from the thousands of times I've talked about it and referenced it. But if he's not gonna spawn, we might need to set some traps. These are pressure plates attached to dispensers that shoot up a firework. So even if you're invisible, I will know. Just like Captain Levi, I've got the height. Well, not actually, because he's like five, six, but you know what I mean? I I'm on a tree. Right? Oh! Bro! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Don't waste my fireworks, okay? I only got like 10 in each one. So, that sheep is driving me cr- what is that? What is that giant hitbox? Hold on, this can only be one thing. This has got to be giant C. Dude, this fit, this hitbox is so big, it doesn't even fit my spyglass. Okay, we approach with caution. With caution. I was also told that giant Steve has T-Rex arms, so if you're low enough, he can't even attack you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I do not, um, it's not how I imagine evil, uh, that's not how I imagine giant Steve sounding. Is he on testosterone? Oh, wow. What? Uh, wait. Um, did you scale your model bigger to freaking troll me? <laughs> you actually think Giant Steve is real, Preston? Are you yes. kidding me? What do you that mean? me! If Giant <laughs> Alex exists, who is gonna be your husband? Oh, it's probably Bree. Wait, okay, I'm gonna well, let you go get some evidence, all right? I don't think it, I don't think it counts if I capture uh, evidence I'm of an idiot. Take, oh, look, that, look at this, huh? Look oh, at that. Wow, that is mm. flat evidence. Hey, <laughs> that is not flat. Wait, what was that? What do you mean, what is that? Oh yeah, what is that, yeah. <gasps> Preston? Yeah, very funny, Chase. I'm sure this is, a, yeah, very funny, dude. It's a giant sea pickle or it's Bree. I don't even believe you. I'm freaking out of here. No, I'm here. Okay, come on. I want this evidence. Maybe I try to egg him on 
and throw it at him like this, like three, two, one, egg. Whoa, okay, oh, take a screenshot. Thanks. I got it, I got it, I got the screen screenshot. This scary myth actually gives me the chills because it's all about the lost head mob. Apparently if you kill Steve on Minecraft, you can get him to summon, but I'm not willing to sacrifice a Steve. However, I do have Steve's head on. So will it still be summoned if I jump to the bottom of this cave sacrificing myself? We will see. <laughs> oh boy, and where's my spawn point? <laughs> okay, I don't see anything down here, but it could be that we're too far away for the chunks to load. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Okay, please don't miss these water bucket clutches. Hello, items. <gasps> Wait, there they are. Come on, dude, I'm not missing this chance to capture evidence. Everything's here. Wait a second, hold up. We're missing the Steve head. What the fuck? What? I just launched a new world then. No, no, don't say it's spooky yet, okay? World's still generating. Uh, maybe if you like the video, we'll load up faster. Yeah, no, yeah, that definitely is gonna make it work. Um, what? Where's all my stuff? Okay, I lost all my items, great. So now I'm gonna have to breed some pigs for some food. Okay, pig, come here. C wh Stop, why are you running away from me? Whenever you hold the carrot out in Minecraft, pigs are supposed to be attracted to you, not unattracted to you. Do do I got negative riz? Okay, maybe the ca cow? Excuse me, sir, I have I have delicious wheat for you. Just stop, you're, stop running from me. I want to breed you. Hey, why don't we try a villager? This is weird, this, what are you do? What is wrong with you? What is, <laughs> what are you doing? Wait a second, hold on, this would be some sick evidence. Where's the telescope? I think I put one of these, uh, I think I put an extra one in one of these houses. Yes, I, okay, boom. Spyglass is back. Bro, I'm gonna capture this evidence so tough. Okay, my evidence is ready. I'm on the hunt. Where's, oh, what is that? Oh, what is this? That is evidence right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh my god, that sound is freaking terrifying. Okay, we all know about Minecraft's passive mobs, but did you guys know they have a dark secret? Cows, chicken, and sheep all might look super cute and friendly, but this rumor states that they're all the creepiest entities in Minecraft. Creepier than creepers, zombies, you name it. If you still don't believe me, just watch this. I'm gonna replace these with redstone blocks. Just a few more and I think we'll be good to go. Okay, okay, I'm gonna start placing down some torches. Oh my god, it's working! I haven't done this since I was like freaking 12! Okay, maybe I should move along because... I don't know, this is... this. These just look like some regular cows to me. Like, to make this even more ritualistic, I'm gonna add more redstone and more torches. Because, I don't know, it wasn't working over here. They're just normal cows. Okay, let's go ahead and... Wait. Wait, what?! The cows! My cows! Oh my god! I knew something weird was gonna happen. This is okay. I wouldn't say cursed so yet, but this is definitely pretty weird. I guess we should just move along. Okay, I'm gonna go overboard on this one and make everything redstone. I'm almost done with these redstone blocks. I'm gonna keep placing. I'm just, I'm I'm not taking any risks. I'm placing a ton. Okay, okay. Finally, on the last batch of animals. Let's see if it works this time. Let's see if they get all weird. I don't know. I just don't think it. Oh, oh my god! No way! It actually worked. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Get away from me! No, they're catching up! No! The tree! No! One of the developers denied adding blood to the game and tested it to prove everyone. The reports say the dev could only mutter two words as he left Mojang. Blood. Enderman. I looked up on the internet to find how to spawn this blood Enderman, and I found a schematic of this weird looking temple. All right, guys, apparently I need to sacrifice a bunch of Endermen and the blood Enderman is gonna spawn. Yeah, likely story. <laughs> Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, men -ny. Oh, no, that. Whoa, okay, I did hear that. I did. Did you guys hear that? What was that? What was this? Wait. Wait. What the heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are my redstones not redstoning? Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa,
maybe I got the screenshot. Maybe I got it. It was right next to me. Oh, I'm zero for two. I haven't found any evidence. The scary myth is the secret boss you've never heard of. When Mojang first added the warden, he was actually meant to be a sacrifice to summon the true boss of the deep dark. The boss was quickly removed because players were genuinely having nightmares causing them to delete their game. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm gonna test it. Uh, you have to sacrifice 13 wardens exactly. Oh, there you are, buddy. Yeah, yeah, face the wrath of my sh- Yeah, dude. Two? Three? I know this is riveting content. You've never seen anything like this before. Five? Six? Seven? Much better the Lord's number, thank God. Eleven? Now, here's where things get interesting. <laughs> I want to try one thing before I sacrifice the 13th Warden. I'm going to sacrifice myself before we sacrifice this 13th warden to see if we can get any more spookiness. It is going to be the craziest sacrifice you've ever seen. Told you, insane. And with that being done, it's time for our 13th sacrifice. Come here, warden. Whoa. Okay, that genuinely sent a little bit of shivers down my spine. Evoker fangs are spawning from the floor? There's this horrific shit, bro. It sounds like Godzilla. That or it's Aaron Yeager. No wonder why they removed him from the game. He's making everybody's ears bleed. Where's Mr. Beast when you need him? Ah! Whoa, whoa. See, I'm getting pulled in random directions. Whoa! What was that? Hold on, wait a second. Wait, I gotta capture you for evidence. Come back here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh! I saw you! I freaking saw you! I am not losing to my best friend or my little brother in this competition. Wait, is that him? Come on, I just need a little bit of evidence! Yes! Yes, it was beautiful! Oh god! No, 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 no! Oh, oh! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I can't see because of the blindness effect! I have no idea where I'm swinging! I'm actually killing him! He's half health? There's no way. No, there's not. Yeah, half a heart. No chance. <laughs> If there is one creature on this list that has caused more nightmares than any other, it would have been Hero Brad. But new rumors claim the real way to spawn him is. Wait, there's no way. What? Apparently, I have to kill a bunch of mobs on Soul Sand. I made this little sign. Hero Brian, please don't kill me. I'm just trying to take a picture with you, dude. I can do that. I can do that. Okay, guys, I put the fencing on top of the Soul Sand. The schematics. Perfect. All right, now, oh gosh, I gotta lure a lot of animals to this place. So, I'll see you in a second. And I'm back, guys. Instead of um, <laughs> luring them, you know what? I just put it to land, I went to creative, and I grabbed spawn egg. So, let's start killing. Oh, why does it gotta be the alpaca? Right, blood for blood. Don't spit on me. Okay, that's one. Whoa, lightning, light. Wait, what is that? Oh, spyglass, spyglass! Zoom in. No! Ugh, I don't like this, I don't like this. But, okay, correlation, there was lightning, so maybe he... I get a lightning rod, and then... Oh, I channel Hero Brian to me. All right. Ba -da 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 -dee. I got a lightning rod. The lightning could strike down at any moment. I'm gonna get out of here. Hero Brian's a monster. I have to be a monster to summon a monster. Come here, baby villager. I'm so sorry. Just at least subscribe. Uh, no. Whoa! It's a witch! Kill the witch! Woo, dang. Hopefully this is strike. Oh! 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 Oh, there he is! Oh, uh, screenshot, screenshot, screenshot! Where are you? Don't turn around, turn around! Turn, look at me! And screenshot! Yes! That's Hero Brian! That's a point for me! Air 422 was originally found in a corrupt version of Minecraft that no longer exists. It was said that this advanced AI, similar to ChatGPT, would feast on anybody who entered their world, which means Minecraft had no choice but to delete the world forever. But luckily, we were able to find the world that they deleted. And now that the world is loaded, hello? I'm about to catch this guy in 4K, and... Oh, it's a horse. The scary myth was stating that he would devour anybody as soon as they joined the world. What? What? Hey, yo. Hey, okay, every time I try to capture... You gotta be freaking- Whoa! Whoa, seizure warning! Hold up! Hold up! Come on, it's not fast enough! The spyglass has gotta speed up a little bit, huh? What is that? I just got this! 
Is this enough evidence to prove that Entity 42 exists? That is an upside down gas. And it just said die on my screen. Did you see what just happened? Look at my hearts. Look at my hearts. They're glitching out. Oh, it's only getting worse. Ah, oh, Akira. Come on out of here. Where are you? Boy, I'm, I'm being like gravitationally pulled. <gasps> Hello, is that the famous Entity 422? Look, I mean, honestly, at this point, you can kind of do whatever you want with me. I already captured you in 4K. Yeah, well, like, dude, TikTok's gonna eat this up, huh? Whenever I post this. You gotta be kidding me. Buddy, give me the evidence back. Stop. Stop. Look, st stop. Hey, hey, listen. I will give you some dank fire merch from firemerch.com. You know, we got a new iOS and Android app. And I, I, yes, I'm using this opportunity for a shameless plug. I'm sorry. It's what I do, okay? I and two. Chase, two. No. Wait, Josh, how many I got three. No, you didn't. I got three. Prove it. Show it. Prove prove it. it. I'll prove it right here. Screenshot it. Watch, watch, watch closely, okay? Pay attention. Bring your head. Jesus. Hey, yo. Ow. Wait a second, Wait, is that it, me? Is you, Preston? Bro, that's when Entity 422 freaking kicked me from the server! It's your stupid skin. Man, it's real? Wait, you captured the evidence of me getting captured? Yeah, but so Josh wins? I win! Ah, oh, that's such garbage. I win! You're the real monster. Get out of my office! I'm taking over his office! Leave! Hey, yo, chill! Here's the new evidence! Josh is the real monster! Josh is a- Hey, you leave here! Fight! Jesus!